Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Wednesday, midweek Wednesday. Hope you're having a great week so far. It's a strange week because we had a holiday weekend. It, it's it's hard to figure out what day it is, right? You notice that? Everybody's saying, wait, what, what's today? So um, we have a few things to talk about today. We're going to get right into it. Uh, we were talking about body hammers last week and we uh, converted a ball peen hammer into a uh, Kind of a body hammer, a universal hammer. I'm going to show you how that works first. And then I'm going to show you a couple other shop aids that will really help you. I think you should try and make one if you uh, have the time. And let's get right to it. Okay, like I said, we do have a lot to get to today. And um, first off, this is the hammer in question. We, we cut off the... And it's funny, a lot of people are asking, did you save the head of the uh, hammer when you took it off and of course you know you know me i'm <laughs> mr frugal but i had plans for that and i'll show you why so we took the head off here and we made this uh awkward looking hammer now you have to understand something that many times when hammers were made throughout the throughout the years um hammers were made so that you had a dual purpose you had different you know you had usually either a, a nail puller or a claw in the back and a striking surface on one side some Japanese hammers have a, it's a square hammer and they have a flat side and a convex side. Um, so there's all different styles of hammers. It, and it, depending on where you place the handle into the hammer, that will uh, dictate your center of gravity and how the balance feels. Now, we're so used to having the hammers with the, it, into the center of the mass that uh, you don't realize that uh, if you put the hammer one way or the other, uh, they have a hammer called a, a dog head hammer, and uh, it gives a much better striking performance. And But most of us have never tried it because we just get what we have and, you know, or what's given to us. Now, this will actually perform better than when you have the weight back here because every time you have this extra weight, when you strike down, if you're not a perfectly centered, which most of us aren't, you might be off a degree or two. If when you come down, if you're down a degree this way, this back weight will throw the hammer as the force comes down. It'll cant the hammer one way or the other. Whereas when you remove that back weight, when you come down, you have less weight pushing the, ha the head one way or the other. So uh, that's a big thing to remember. But uh, this is a very, if you ever tried this, if you ever tried hitting something with a hammer that is a dog, uh, a dog style hammer with a dog head hammer where you have the weight forward, it's, it's a very enjoyable hammer to use. I'm going to show you how we can use this in different aspects. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a, a shop project that uh, I think all of you should try and make. Let me show Years you what ago, that is. I made this real quick, and it is one of the, my most used shop items that I ever made. However, when I was doing some heavy peening, I actually split it. So uh, let me show you what this is, how it's used. It's simple device, fantastic. Let me take it apart. It's screwed on there. Let me take it apart and show you what it now, is. Now, to make this, we're just going to take a, a scrap piece of 2 by 6 or any kind of construction lumber you have. This one, you can see, is warped here, but it's all right. We're going to use the curve on the bottom. Here's a piece of 2 by 3 That'll be put on the bottom like this. Line it up and just put a couple leg bolts to hold this to the bottom, just like that. And let me show you what it looks like when it's now done. what i use this item for you could see here like i said it's nothing but two pieces of scrap wood put together now on your vice which everybody's vice is or usually bolted down here i have it clamped down but bolted down you take this you put it into the jaws like this you tighten it up and now what you have is you have a pounding surface here that you could use and um it's nice and high you can do some intricate work I've used it so many times. You, you've seen me use it. Now, this hole is good if you have to punch out uh, pins or something like that. You could take the item, put it over the hole, and punch out a pin using uh, using your hammer and punch a pin out, and it'll, you'll have a recess here. You can make all different holes on here. You could customize it. You can make dimples. And now you wondered why I kept this. You know, you can see here we cleaned up both sides. Now you could take this here and you have a... A little striking anvil here that you could use and uh, and it's metal and you could turn around it's a shorter a smaller one here but this is a little striking anvil that you could use and so that's why I kept this but uh, 
So this, everybody should have one of these. It works really good. We're going to do some peening in a minute, but uh, I always said everybody should. I, I use it all. Now, a lot of people enjoyed the uh, the fix on this handle. Now the reason I didn't put a new handle on here is because sometimes if you're doing a prototype like this is, you want to beat on it and everything, and no sense in putting a new handle on this is a, a totally acceptable fix i did this years ago on this one here but i told you i do like a thinner wire uh just the appeal to me the thinner wire i think looks better but uh, you can see i did this same thing with the epoxy i use this all the time for peening now when we talk about peening uh there's obviously two heads to a ball peen hammer the reason a ball peen hammer is different than a carpenter they're, they're tempered different they're a little bit harder because they're made for striking metal now you have your obviously your flat side here and you have your ball over here now there are different size balls you can even see here the difference in these two uh you know so a lot of times you'll have a, a set of ball peen hammers for different uh applications but most times 90 times nine out of ten times when you see me peening something over i'm using the flat side of the hammer because that will dome a, a, a item whereas if you use the ball side that will expand the item and mushroom it out and i'll show you what that looks like first let's take this bolt and uh, we'll peen over the top as if we wanted to secure it that the uh, nut can't come off so let's go over to the now vise. the first thing you have to remember is we want to leave a little bit of a, of the stud outside of the nut so that we have area to peen and then we'll mushroom this down and i'm only going to be using the flat side of the hammer you can see here we peened it over it's night but the, you see that splitting over there that's because we had too much material hanging over the top and of course when you try and peen and you see what happens it splits so now we're going to do another one with less material let's take this off and here cut that cut off. off that old peen now you see we only have about a thread one pitch hanging over the top it's less now we'll we'll peen this over and you'll see what it looks like Okay, so there we go. You see, that's the uh, that's again all done with the flat side of the hammer. Now you can see that's a nice peen, right? Now you say, well, what do I use the ball side for? If you're using a flat for everything, well, see, what I told you is this is doming. Now, if you want to expand the metal or, or curve it in a concave shape, that's when you use the ball. And let me show you how that now, works. For the peening side, let's say we had to expand this. We wanted to expand this because it's such a small nut here. We'll use, and we have a small area that we can touch, so we'll peen it over using the ball on this new hammer. There we go. Look at that. Isn't that a nice peen job over here on that uh, on that smaller one? That's where the ball gets in really handy. It expanded it, brought it out, and you could see it still will spin. We didn't expit. We didn't blow it up from uh, pressure still spins the nut but it won't come off because it's peened over now this is why i don't throw out any tins or anything because you know if you ever need a piece of sheet metal especially in a dome shape or something this is called the doming set and i'll show you how this works you, you usually comes with a female die that has and this is hardened steel has these domes cut out and they have matching uh ball strikers but that's the same thing that the, the ball peen that I made, you could make your own doming set or you could use this. You see how that fits in there. And I'll show you how we use that. But let me show you what you might use something like this for. My buddy Cliff, Mr. Doughboy365, he makes all kinds of jewelry and teapots and all kinds of things out of coins using similar materials like this. You know, mostly jewelry makers, things like that. But first we're going to cut out a piece of this sheet metal. I'm going to show you if you needed a domed washer or anything. Now this little gadget's called a sheet metal punch, or you can use it for a lot of different, and what it is, it's two hardened blocks with holes in here, and you can see how it's pinned so it aligns correctly. Now what you would do is you would take your piece of sheet metal like we just cut out from that uh, thing, and we're gonna put it here like this, under one here, and we'll put the pins back, align the pins back up. And then you take the corresponding punch, which a whole set of these you could see here, comes with a whole set of uh of different sizes and they have a one thing about them is they have a uh a chamfered end over here and they have a sharp end uh, 90 degree and the 90 degree goes in here like this and then what you do is you just wrap it with a a hammer and it will punch out a perfect circle i'm using a brass hammer for here there we go punches it right out there we go.
perfect hole cut in here. But what we want is the disc. Now, let's say we want to put a, uh, a curve in here again. Uh, we want to put some kind of curve. Now, you can put it in here. Use one of the doming pins to squeeze it in between. But sometimes sheet metal doesn't bend quite the way you would hope it to. But we, then we have a larger doming blocks. You can see here another hardened block with all different sizes. You can make any size you want. So, or any diameter and we'll take it uh here and this is where we'll use our our hammer here and again you could tap on the back of this to give you uh to give you more control and you have a nice handle to hold it and turn it and left and right and you can use it under the dake also okay so here you see we made a nice little hub cap for a uh, toy car you can see, uh, or whatever you wanted to make or something like that. So there's endless possibilities that you can do forming metal, especially with this ball peen. Let me show you how this will work under the dake. Everybody's favorite, the dake. Let's check out the setup. Okay, like I said, the beauty, let's say we had to dome this washer for one reason or another, okay? Put it in the doming block. We take our hammer. That's why I left the back of this flat. Put it under here like this. Now we can control it with the dake, hold it with our hand, move it around, you know, we can get whatever angle we want and, uh, and press it down. So let's see, again, this is my uh, first time using this in this situation, but uh, that was my plan, why I, left, why I left it the way I did. So let's press this down and you can say, okay, now we got pressure. I'm able to hold the handle up. Oh, you see it's forming that washer. Beautiful, beautiful. Bring it down. Okay, you see what we did here? Wow. Wow. How nice is that? Isn't this nice? Now you want one of these. Okay, next up, I got a, a pretty good shop tip that I wonder if uh, some of you know of. But I'm sure some of you don't. And I think you'll find it really interesting. Let's check it out right now. Okay, what I'm going to show you, really interesting. Came in handy so many times for me because my math skills are not up to par. And uh, a lot of times you have to find the center of something you're going to cut. Like say a piece of wood or a piece of tile or anything. And it's not exact. Like if this was 8 inches, you know, it's, it's no brainer. 4 inches right in the middle. Now, they make a center-finding ruler or center-finding tape here, and you can see how this works if you open this up like this. And you can see here that um, it'll show that this is just over eight and three-quarter inches, but on the bottom, it'll show you the half. And that's this is a nice thing to have. But let me show you something real easy you can do with any tape measure so, or any kind of ruler. Now, we look here, and we already determined that this is eight and 13 sixteenths uh, inches uh, across, okay, which is hard to divide in half for anybody. So what you do is you take it and you tilt your, your ruler, catch the edge on this side here, okay, and you bring it down until you get to an even number. In this case, we'll bring it down to nine. See, it says nine over there, and then we know the half of nine is four and a half. We'll go right to the four and a half over here, and we'll put our little tick mark right in four and a half now that's perfectly centered right there now i know what you're saying you're saying wait that can't be and it is now if you wanted to check yourself and see if it's perfectly centered take a pair of calipers place it on the dot you just made look we get right to the edge you see where let me get to the edge over here we're right on the edge right there we spin it around and we're right on the edge over here. So that's perfectly centered. And uh, that works with all lengths of wood. I'll try the piece of wood underneath. Okay, here we have a piece of wood. And again, I was looking for wood that wasn't cut. And you could see it's just under 12 inches. Again, you know, it's some crazy fractional thing. So what you do is you just tilt it this way until you get right to 12, right when it's on 12. And then you know half of 12 is six. You put your little dot right here, right at six exactly, and that's dead center in the in the center. Now this also works. You don't you don't have to use twelve. If I if I went up at a steeper angle to fourteen, which I'll show you here, we'll go right to fourteen. The next uh, 
one up here, 14 inches, that's seven, half of six, so you go right to seven, okay? Boom, right to seven, that's exactly center, same place. And uh, that's how you find the center of any board, just tilt it, and get to the next whole number that you could divide in half easily in your head, and just mark it that way. Pretty cool tip, huh? Okay, so in closing, that was a bit of a mosh. I, I like the mosh episodes, you know, and I like to come down the shop and just tinker and practice and... You know, we didn't make anything or do anything today, but, you know, it keeps your skills up when you, you know, you play with these doming blocks and things like that. It's just fun. Tools are fun. <laughs> anyway, hope you have a great day. We'll see you again on Friday. Take care now. Bye-bye.